I'm back and you know what it means we're gonna do things differently we're gonna change things up and I'm trying to be a good girl but you know 2020 oh my uh, uh, no uh, uh, no this year it's insane you all know that it's been insane uh, but it has been since Christmas 2019 when I did a once up video for the hashtag diamonds are for Christmas Christmas dp live videos or live, well not really live videos. If you joined, you know what it was. It was awesome. So thank you Pippa Brown for arranging that and letting me join. It was awesome. But my life has been crazy ever since last September. Um, and I, I actually, I, I kind of walked away from YouTube at all. I was active on Instagram, so if you follow me, I'm Dutch Duck Diamond Painting, also on Instagram. And I have been crafting and I've been posting a lot of things there, but the videos and the editing and trying to get content and buying, it means buying. Um, no, I couldn't, I couldn't do it anymore. It was, it was too much. It just didn't work with my schedule and I just, I burned out, I burned out. And I recently just started watching YouTube videos again. Um, and then I realized how much I miss you all. Yeah, yeah. Um, so let's start and uh, I I'm gonna do something new. <clears throat> I've been watching a lot of Floss Tube. Uh, yes, I've been cross stitching. But you know me, if you follow me or have ever seen me before, I'm all about craft. I do tons of things. I can't just do a floss tube. First of all, it's gonna mean that I'm gonna buy all kinds of fabric that I'm probably not gonna use. I'm gonna make a ginormous stash of all sorts of things because everything's so pretty. Oh my God, it's so pretty. And it's been really, really hard to not jump in that hole and I'm on the edge and I'm no I can't I, I know how, how I am I, I can't fit my my craft supplies anywhere anymore it's been too much um, because I do resin I diamond paint that's what I started this channel with I cross stitch now I do paint my numbers I make my own costumes for carnival it's been, it's too much. So I'm gonna do something a bit different, but in the style of floss tube, because I do like the style. I absolutely love the style that you can see me and we're more like talking. Yeah, so we're gonna do the style, but I'm gonna call it different. I'm gonna call it craft tube. Yeah, I'm just gonna call it something different and kind of snatch the idea from floss tube. Who cares? I'm gonna do it. Um, and if you don't like it, let me know down below. You know what the comments are. Most likely I'm not gonna change what I figured out right now. Um, since I just started and I don't wanna be burned out, but if you wanna give me a nasty comment or just comment that you don't like the concept, I'm okay. I might listen, I might not, who knows. This year I'm feeling like a rebel, so I'm just gonna do whatever I want. Yeah, this year, 2020. Oh. It's, it's, it's only the 8th of August today. And believe it or not, it's insanely warm here in the Netherlands. Um, for those of you who don't know, I live in the Netherlands. I live in the southern part. And the predicted temperature for today is 36 degrees Celsius which is 79 Fahrenheit. No, I didn't do that out of the top of my head. No, of course not. I never used Fahrenheit in my life. I used a converter. Yeah, I kind of make notes. I made notes. Ooh. Yeah, I made notes. Um, I made notes just because I've got so many things to talk about. I've got lots of things I want to show you 
And of course, we're gonna do crafty stuff, but first, I wanna go over the year so far, kinda in like hyper speed because so many things happened and so many things had an impact on my life. Um, since I work, I'm a doctor, so I work in a hospital, I work in an ER in the Netherlands, and yeah, yeah, you've all been through this year. Um, yeah, it's. No, mm, mm. we're not gonna do this again. Yeah, most likely we are, but I don't want it. I don't want to, no. Um, but yeah, this year it's it started off with me figuring out that I had too many diamond paintings. Yeah, um, and those of you who are, who are crafters say you can never have too, too much stash. My stash nearly hit a hundred, but we're gonna talk about it later. Um, so yeah, um, this year started off with me getting a nearly hernia. Um, I still work out with the same trainer I've always been working out with. I love the guy, he's amazing. He really listens to my body and we were kind of starting to work things up a bit getting more weight on it and um, after a little injury last year and yeah th this year I we, we, we were doing back squats not even a lot of weight no not even a lot of weight but somehow I lost focus uh, and it was the first time doing back squats since the first time I got injured um, and it went great and in the last set I went down, came up with the weight and my back snapped and I, I was kind of standing there like ow, 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 help, help and I, I couldn't move left, right, up, down, I couldn't, I was stuck so my trainer actually thought I was joking uh, because I, I was still holding the weights and I, I just didn't know what to do. Um, but yeah, it was bad. It was bad. It was in January and those of you who have full-blown lower back hernias, oh my god, I, I, I can't believe that you deal with that all the time. I, uh, Of course, it happened on the day I had to work. Of course it did. So I worked out early and um, I had gotten a text from a colleague that day that her uh, child was in the pediatrics department and uh, they were doing some tests on, he, uh, on him and she wasn't sure whether or not she was gonna make her evening shift um, and normally we do those uh, single-handedly but by coincidence we were planned double that evening so I said, well, no problem. I'm there. If you're not there, I'm gonna. We're gonna figure it out. It's okay. Yeah, shouldn't have said that because, yeah, I, I couldn't move. It, it hurt so much. I was doing stretches there. I put on a brave face for, face for my trainer, but it hurt like hell. It's. I, I was sitting at work. It was a quiet day, so we wasn't walking around as much and my legs were burning and some private parts were burning or numb and the pain was insane and I had all kinds of painkillers inside of me and the next step was going to be using morphine yeah uh, and I was still nearly crying because of the pain and, and yeah, I, I couldn't I couldn't go home but I did see that I was over planned the next day um, so I asked one of my colleagues to uh, take my shifts. Uh, I took a sick day the next day and I, I knew I had uh, long weekends when I did that. So I arranged that, um, went to a therapist who nearly made me cry. I was close to tears and then I needed to do grocery shopping. Very nice if you need to ask an 80 year old to get some kind of can from the lowest part in this in the rack it, it was horrible it was horrible I, I couldn't sit for more than 15 minutes um, I slept the first day 
like the entire day because the only time I didn't feel any pain was when I was lying down. So somehow that's amazing. But one of my uh, lumbar disc moved and was pressing on uh, both roots, uh, nerve roots. So I had issues with both legs, the left more than the right. Um, and mostly pain. Luckily, I didn't lose any sensation, definitely, but pain. Ooh. So, yeah, and he said, you need to walk. You need to walk. It's January. Where am I going to walk? And I had to walk, walk as it was either lay down, sit for 15 minutes or walk. When I lay down during the day, I can sleep. I can put up a movie, but I'll sleep. No issue. No, not at all. So I started doing Pokemon Go just to have a goal. Um, walking. And do something while I'm walking. So the first two days, my days were like, I woke up, I took my pain mats, uh, put on some clothes. Usually just put my hair up in a bun because it was way longer. It's still long, but then it was... It was, it was kind of tight. It was over my boobs. It was insane. Um, so yeah, I did that and just woke up, put on a sweatshirt, started walking, doing Pokemon Go. By the time my battery died on my phone, I had to come home. I got to recharge it, had some breakfast, uh, lay down a bit more and then started walking again. First week I walked 50 kilometers. 50. One week just playing Pokemon Go. Yeah. Um, I did get some things to uh, uh, some therapeutic stretches, let's call it that. And they really worked out. So by the time it was Sunday, it happened on a Wednesday, by the time it was Sunday, I could walk without any difficulties. It was still stiff, it was still hurting a bit but on Sunday we had pre-carnival and I really didn't want to miss it um, so I just went and I told everybody I'm gonna see how it goes and if it doesn't go I need to keep walking anyway so I might not be as supple as I usually are uh, am sorry English today I can't English no but yeah so that happened it got resolved it took me a long while I'm was finally allowed to start training again and then corona hit mm -hmm. corona hit uh, all over the world but in the part where i live we celebrate carnival we all do and carnival is like seven days of partying being close together yeah um, not really cleaning glasses um, sharing, sharing glasses, yeah, not really a good situation if you want to curb a virus, no, and it was two weeks before it really started hitting here, I think the first patient in the Netherlands was one week after carnival, um, so yeah, it, it of course, more pe people were infected than they felt ill and carnival is such a big thing in the Netherlands that if you have a little cold you're gonna go, you're gonna go. you really need to be extremely sick if you don't want to go um, so yeah of course it took off the virus took off in the southern parts it really got horrible uh, but I did have a nice carnival. Carnival was great. It was awesome. Uh, and if you watched me last year, uh, when I showed you that I made the dress and the costume, when I did a little series on that, um, I told you about Mr. Bo. Yes, Mr. Bo. Uh, and that he kind of dropped off the face of the earth, didn't respond to my text. Yeah, so I was over it. I don't know why, but he kind of showed up out of the blue uh, I ran into him in one of the bars and 
yeah, he stuck to me like glue for the rest of Carnival. Um, nothing happened. Mm -mm. No, no. If you treat me like that, you're not gonna give it get it get a second chance. No, I'm not that desperate. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Um, but he did give us a lot of good drinks. Yeah, karma, karma's bitch. Oops, sorry. Yeah, it's not. It's not. This is adulting, people. I'm just. I'm. I'm being real. Karma's a bitch. I can't. No. Um, I'm trying to keep the cursing to a minimum, but this year has been so. <coughs> Uh, that I've been cursing a bit, yeah, Corona, working in the ER and yeah, it took off, it took off and uh, plans were being made, uh, people were telling me, uh, my boss was telling me, well, if we uh, we pull all of the, the doctors in training, so the residents, we pulled them from their internships in other hospitals, other departments, to have enough doctors in the ER because we had no idea how bad it was going to get which meant that we had a lot of extra doctors we had five extra doctors on a filled schedule so um, my boss actually to protect us all from overworking I got more days off uh, shifts got scrapped um, yeah I actually worked less than I've done in years. I've never been so many days at home since I started working, which wasn't a vacation. It's, uh, I st I'm still hours short from the Corona period. Um, but yeah, if we got too many ill, sick, infected doctors, we were gonna go to a six hours up, six hours off, kind of schedule so you would work 12 hours a day uh, meaning I would have to stay in the hospital um, we made a shadow roster so that when one person got ill uh, you there were two people who knew they would would be able to call you and you would have to go um, we always hated the idea before because my boss wanted that for years but we don't want to do it because most of us aren't that often ill uh, but yeah w this situation was of course totally different so we changed everything up uh, we started working with set double night shifts uh, sorry evening shifts um, making all kinds of changes in the uh, in the roster um, but yeah then became noticed yeah we might need to change one moment to the next from different phases which means for me i have an hour commute one way so it would mean if i had to work eight hours off on eight hours off that i would on most get five hours sleep not knowing how long it was going to go so of course we got asked what do you want and uh, we said well we want to be able to get warm dinners uh, because all the shop shops in the hospital closed so it was very hard to get dinner so we want to be able to have warm dinners um, doesn't matter when but we want warm dinners something to eat uh, we want good coffee the coffee bar closed they closed the coffee bar the coffee bar so uh, i started bringing my own coffee um, before we got a pop-up coffee bar who did it out of charity for us for a month it was awesome great coffee um, and I said well I want a place to sleep and more of my colleagues work uh, live a long way away from the hospital um, by Dutch standards an hour commute for Dutch standards is a long long commute um, so all things were put in order uh, there were extra beds for us to stay um, but they said well we never know when this is gonna really hit uh, when it's gonna get real bad so pack a bag 
have a go back which meant on the day that our prime minister uh, told us we were going to go on lockdown so everybody who wasn't essential had to stay at home the next day i had to go shopping i didn't have any pajamas i could work uh, wear in a hospital i was low on shampoo low on deodorant low on toothpaste i only had one brush yeah so and of course picking up eight or nine items out of your closet put them in in a bag and not know when you're going to use it it kind of isn't really working so i made a bag bought all the stuff it was odd i was there on saturday morning i went real early uh, so most shops just opened or um, were in the process of opening when i was there i bought all this stuff went back made a bag filled it with some craft supplies because if I'm stuck in a hospital I do need to do some crafts if there was any way of keeping sane so I made a bag bought a, uh, a sleeping bag um, put it in the car and I took it out a month ago because yeah it, it I never use it so that's a good thing it was really it was a good thing um, but yeah it, it's been insane um, and I think that people who do not work in a hospital or healthcare have no idea but luckily we do have a very good primary health system so we have GPs they really cover all over the Netherlands and in the Netherlands if you're ill you're gonna contact your GP he's gonna come he's gonna see um, do some checkups and if you're very ill you're gonna go to the ER and then um, we're gonna process you and you're gonna go either home or be admitted to the hospital um, so that really took some pressure off the ER um, compared to other countries of course we still have the ambulance and so if people call uh, the Dutch equivalent of the 911 of course the ambulance will show up they will check you out and usually they will take you um, but it was insane it was it, it was insane because we didn't see anything normal and with normal I mean no heart attacks hardly any strokes I mean like one a week maybe one a week we usually get three a day yeah and you're not gonna tell me they didn't happen. No, they have to happen because it, it has nothing to do with staying at home. Um, of course, all the fractures, uh, sporting injuries, car crashes, all that stuff. Of course, it's, it's logical that when people don't go out as much, we're not gonna see it as much. But strokes, appendicitis, one a week, it, it it was strange and it's something we've seen in I think all around the world that things we usually see a lot of um, just stop coming and people really thought about when they had to call the doctor and yeah so I, it was worrisome because when you have a stroke you need to go to the hospital so we can help you that's that's how it is and people just stopped they stopped and I don't know why I think they thought we were too busy yeah we in the ER having the good primary healthcare system we weren't busy we went down to 20 to 30 patients a day with all the extra doctors all the extra nurses so yeah it, I've never worked like this before it was insane when you did see patients it was corona it, it, it just it, it was the COVID-19 and um, it, it I could almost copy paste the story of those patients um, because they were so similar yeah I've been kind of ill for the last two weeks just been, been staying at home been coughing uh, runny nose, little little fever, it all went well, but now I can't do anything. 
we had people that went to the GP because they were feeling tired and thought they were depressed because of the entire situation. They got to the GP, they weren't even coughing or having a runny nose, no nothing. No, they went there, they put the uh, O2 saturation on the finger and they were at 68. 68 and they walked to their GP. Guys, when I normally see someone who has 80, it was ooh, 80, 80, he's really sick, really ill. Me as a doctor, I'm gonna love it. Because a really ill patient means going, going to do lots of things, really work your ass off to help them, save them. Awesome. People walked to the GP, found out they had O2 sets at 86, and then said, oh, do I need to go to the hospital? But I'm not that ill. And they would come to us and we would have to urge them to accept the ventilator. 86, they were so ill and they didn't notice. We had patients coming in, walking in and just barely hanging on. And you could see, well, they're, they're ill. We, we need to admit them and they would crash like, they would come in, we would talk to them, we would see them, we, we were complete, completely streamlined, everything, it went like whoosh. 30 minutes later, they were in the ventilator. They were hooked in the ventilator, they walked in. They walked in, it's, it's been so insane. And knowing how many people walked in, I've never, the worst week, I, I look back on the patients that I admitted and I, I had one week where I saw a lot of older people and our GPs actually send out letters or phones, all the older citizens with the question, what do you want us to do? Do you want to be sent to the hospital? Do you want to be put on a ventilator? Do you want CPR? Think about it because this is going to be running a marathon while not even walking while being asleep, your body is gonna be hit as hard as it's, it's ever been hit. And do you want that? Do you want to lose so many things? So most people were informed when I came into the ER and I saw the first week, I saw a lot of older elderly patients, patients with all kinds of comorbidities, um, lung disease, heart disease, diabetes, all kinds of stuff. And I actually, I admitted a lot of patients to our hospice. We, we made an in-hospital hospice. So we would give them a palliative care so they wouldn't be feeling the, this, uh, the shortness of breath, no pain or nothing, and they would die. And I think that's also a big difference with other countries. We in the Netherlands are really sad at making sure that our healthcare is to the level the patient wants it to go. We won't go. If you normally can't walk to your mailbox, you're not gonna survive a ventilator. We can put you on the ventilator, but most likely we're never gonna take you off. And if you come off, you'll be stuck in a wheelchair for probably a year, two years. Do you want it? So we're, we're really looking at, at patients and seeing who would go on the ventilator who wouldn't and of course we would always do that during discussion with the patient so we would explain everything and most patients actually chose the the elder ones chose we don't want to be put on the ventilator so we hardly ever put a 75 and up patient on the ventilator they really needed to be fit it, it didn't happen as much in our hospital um, but yeah, we got hit first. We were hardest hit. Some of the hospitals in our area really got overrun. And I must say, my hospital did an amazing job. We, they stamped an entire new department out of the grounds. Uh, it was an empty hall that was scheduled to be demolished or reused for something else like office space. Um, 
but they actually changed the plans and in a, w in a week they made a new ward especially for people who were suspected of having COVID-19. Uh, so we had an, an area where all the suspected patients went to one person rooms. Um, we had tests within 24 hours and the moment we got the test back people would be placed either in the clean area or in the infected area. Um, but we at, in the ER it was an hour's work, hour and a half to see one of those patients make the decision ICU, normal or hospice. That was what we did. And because all the stories were the same, it, you would see the chest x-ray and they were extremely fast and you would look at the x-ray and you would say yes, this is COVID. And you could go into the talk with your patient in, in a completely different way. Um, more, more in what do you want, what would you need to do, um, yeah, and rules. The rules kept changing every single day. So for everyone who was, wasn't an essential, doc, uh, essential worker, it was stay at home. If you were an essential worker, you would need to stay home when you had any complaints um, con regarded to fit to the to the virus. And it doesn't work for doctors. No, no, we're superhumans. We don't get ill. Mm -hmm. So we actually got a notice. The entire hospital got a notice that all vacation and free time was now scrapped that we were still working with a roster but yeah you would be expected to be on call 24 7 um not knowing how how hard it was going to be and they actually send out the next message saying well the only reason you don't need to come into the hospital you can't come working is if you have a fever we now know that most people don't even get a fever. I went to Carnival. Carnival is a lot of people together. Flu was running. I always have a runny nose. I have a runny nose all year long. I worked. And we just put on the suits before we went into the patient's room. So we were sitting together with all the colleagues, normally dressed, no mask, no face shield, no nothing. The moment you went into the patient's room, you would dress up and go in. That is what we did. So if one of us was infected, we, we can't keep six feet apart. We can't. It's not really possible in the place I work. There's no not enough room for it. And when your patient is dying from some other cause, you're not going to go in there and mind that you're too close to your nurse because she's drawing blood while well, you're trying to do other stuff with the patient. You're going to be too close. Yeah. So that's, we first started using the masks, the FFP2 mask. Well, then we got the notice, no, you don't need to use those. No, it's not necessary. You just need to use the FFP1. Okay, well, I'm healthy. I, I was okay with that. Mm -hmm. Then they figured out that we could use some kind of surgical mask. Uh, it would still keep out enough virus. Well, they don't completely face cover. No, they were open nine out of ten times on all sides. Yeah. I think I had it. I honestly think I had it. I woke up one day and it, it, it's kind of, I had a rash. My entire body had a rash, it looked like a viral rash and I hadn't been ill. And normally you get that around three weeks after having a viral infection. Well, I had all the children's infections that usually give that kind of rash. I had them as a child and be ill. So, what was going on and i had a lot of colleagues with the exact same rash and luckily it didn't itch or anything it's just i was covered 
my entire body from here my neck up to my uh, groin area I was covered in all kinds of red dots and were yeah it is what it was was strange I showed my colleague and she said well yeah it's not really in the description list of you can't work so yeah, you need to go work um, and at that point you didn't need testing if you had a rash so I didn't get tested I, I still they were there was an option to get uh, the antigen test uh, but it was during my my vacation time in June so I didn't get tested and I might have had it I might, it may not but yeah so it, it has been crazy and the only thing that kept me going to, through these days was crafting it who cares about doing laundry cleaning out the house no I was crafting I was keeping sane I was no adulting was gonna wait I needed to keep my mind ready to work ready to do and um, yeah so that's what I did so I did a lot of crafts and I'm gonna show you in a sec because we're only we're already 36 minutes in I haven't shown you any crafts but yeah I don't think you mind otherwise just skip ahead at some point I just want to tell you one more thing and then I'm gonna do crafts uh, because now I work in the ER and I love it, I absolutely love it um, but those who, who know me and have followed me before know that I won't get a residency or attending position in that field so I actually applied for a, a residency in general practitioning so first line healthcare um, I'm gonna know in about three weeks whether or not I get the interview so fingers crossed I really need something to keep going uh, but crafting yeah uh, I've done a lot of crafts I've made some awesome resin pieces I really was into resin during the first stage of COVID uh, and the lockdown I did so many uh, resin pieces I made the hangers, I made earrings, I made rings, I used all kinds of different te uh, techniques um, and I had so much that I actually took it to work and all my female colleagues now have a pair of my earrings or I uh, have a, a necklace or it was fun. It, I enjoyed making them but but I was making way too much and I have some some here so let's pull just, just the bag. Let's see if I can show you what I've been doing. So I made this tiny little one and it's hard to see let's see if I have some can we do it like this yeah kind of works so some flowery ones I did this one more flowery ones um, of course I still love using these so feathers love those and yeah it was so bad I have a hundred pairs of earrings right now a hundred I make myself and I had the plan to start the an Etsy shop I uh, still might do it I still have all the stash and still can do it but I actually got the envelopes I've got the envelopes wait I need to I need to clean I need to put things away otherwise it's gonna be one hell of a mess uh, but I have the envelopes I'm gonna show you because they're so cool um, yeah but it's it's by the time I got the envelopes things really started going back to normal and it kind of got lost in normal work but I did get the envelopes one second oh my god look at how cute they are so padded, padded envelopes so I might actually start putting on an Etsy shop uh, or just mail some stuff to people that I've been following um, and who've been, who's been checking in on me and yeah yeah so I might uh, I might gonna use I might use it um, now that the postal service is almost back to normal Dutch postal service still as balls you know um, but yeah craft so I did the resin pieces um, and then I ran out of resin and then of course I didn't get my order um, they got all lost so I finally got my, got my I got my resin back um, 
so yeah i got my resin um and i'm really thinking about starting to do some other stuff i make my first needle minder yeah i did mm -hmm. so i might make some needle minders and see how it goes um and i always been kind of on the fence whether or not to start paying by numbers and a lot of my colleagues did it and then i thought you know why not just why not it's it's not going to be my favorite craft definitely not because mm, too messy too many things to do with it i, I don't know but i did it i have two kids in the mail i had two kids one i worked out so let me show you of course it's an owl you know how much i love my owls um and i really think it turned out awesome so yeah i i really i worked it up in like three days i was so happy it was finally here i've got one of the pieces it took three months to get here three months most of the stuff got lost had to be resent um this is the first period that i actually didn't get parcels that were totally lost they were resent got lost again and then yeah I, I lost the money on it because they were not gonna refund the mess up of the postal service i can understand so it was if it was 50 50 euros it's it's a lot I, I think it was less so yeah i did that one and i'm currently working on another owl it's a bit bigger but i love these colors so this is my current whip um and I might pick it up. Ooh, I love the colors in this in the frame. I love it when I'm just looking at it, but in the frame it looks awesome. So bright. Um, but yeah, I started on this one, but I was afraid I was gonna run out of black. And as you see, the other owl had a lot of black. So I kind of switched, uh, and now I have this one um, as a whip. So I love it. I used on the same, uh, stand I use for my diamond painting just clip it on um, it's a bit creased I don't care I don't care I'm not gonna hang it on anything I did get a frame for it because it was in the kit so yeah um, yeah I've got Aliexpress itis I think that's the best best way to put it when I see something and isn't that that expensive I'll order it yeah I've ordered so many things this year no diamond painting no -uh. Uh -uh. i wasn't allowed to because i joined the slash to stash 2020 uh, and i set myself a goal to make 24 pieces work up 24 kits um i'm still on schedule for that i have a diamond painting in i think a month month and a half now I've got crafters ADD. I'll work on some crafts, totally love it, totally go up, in, and then I just kind of burn out and I pick up something else and I do that for a while and then, yeah, it keeps going. Uh, and sometimes I do multiple crafts at once, but mostly just the one craft that I'm totally into at that moment and I'm gonna switch it up. Um, but yeah, slash the stash. My trusty booklet. Unfortunately, uh, this this doesn't count for the slash to stash part. No, uh, but those of you who have followed me on Instagram know that I use a, a random number generator to pick my next whip. Um, and why? Well, I'm gonna show you. This is. Uh, I thought I. I got a new container for my drills and didn't fit and it is a huge huge container so i was like "Ooh, i might have a bit too many let's count them i wish i never had because it's pretty hard doing this backwards so we've got that page and this page and this page and then it continues and stops here so 94 94 and i had two whips at that time 
94 kits in my stash. Yeah, I needed to slice the stash. So I've been doing real well. Um, I actually wrote down, I'm gonna show you um, whether or not it was square or round and all, all the details of my stash at that point. And I wanted to know how fast I was working. So I made a new kind of thing. Yeah, I wanted to know the amount of centimeters I could do, square centimeters I could do in a minute. Um, so I made a little formula for that, quite easy. Take the amount of centimeters you did and divide it by the minutes you spent working on it. Yeah, uh, it means that I now when I diamond paint, I'm actually putting down for each square, I'm putting down my timer. Yeah. So um, I'm gonna show you real quick the back of my current whip. So you can see I write down these numbers and of course it's gonna, I've got you on uh, full frontal uh, set so I can actually see it so you can't read it. But this is, uh, I write down the squares and I write down the minutes I worked on it. Which means, that around my average for round drills at the moment is something in the way of 1.7 I believe squares are 1.3 centimeters square centimeters per minute um, and I'm working on project 18 uh, which means that that's actually the point where I need to be on the end of September so if I finish my current whip I'm still ahead of schedule, so nice. But I did uh, 18, yeah, well I'm working on number 18, but I did 17 and they're not all small. I, I got real lucky in the beginning. I had a whip, so I worked that up, got up the, started it off. Then I had a um, snowman 30 by 40 in, um, I believe it's in squares, no, was it squares? Yes, it was squares because it was one of the sister companies of Hulkan. Yeah, I did that. Uh, luckily, it was only a 30 by 40, but pop, 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 pop. Yeah. Uh, and then I got lucky because I had a 15 by 15 next, uh, then a 20 by 30, um, and then I got some large square ones. So I had a 40 by 50, 45 by 45, uh, another 40 by 50, um, and then I got some rounds. Um, I had a partial, which also was very helpful. Um, and yeah, it's gonna be backwards, I believe for you, but I actually write down the project I worked on. So this is a very small hurricane I worked on. Um, it took me 508 minutes to complete, uh, which makes the, um, I don't know how I did it because it was in square. Oh, it was a hurricane. That's why. I only did 1.18 square centimeters per minute. So that was really, really slow. Uh, but the rounds, I'm, I'm really up to round 170, uh, 1.70, 1.60. That's my average, I guess, for rounds. Um, and I had a lot of rounds afterwards. And I had a special one. Yeah, I did a special three. One hour and se uh, 37 minutes. Check. Awesome. It really, really does good for your slash stash. But yeah, I, I have projects here that, that go up to 23 hours. Uh, 21, 20, most of the 40 by 50s I work around 20, 24 hours on. Um, I did one and I don't know what it was. Those drills were either tiny, uh, it, no. That's why I kind of stopped somewhere, but those deal, drills didn't work for me. And it was around the time I had my back issues. So that's most likely why it took me so long and I need to get back into it. And when I did a, 10 by 10 square, which is my usual, which takes me an hour, an hour and a half, something in between to do 10 by 10 square. 
that one I needed to do by 10 by 5. So I had to actually divide my 10 by 10 squares because I was going crazy. Yeah, I was going crazy, so I actually divided those to work on them more efficiently because I was working on a 10 by 5 square. I was working an hour, an hour and a half, so I, I really was going slow. Something with those drills, I don't know what. I think they were smaller. I have the feeling they were smaller, but they got stuck in my three three placer and all that kind of stuff. And oh, so that one I took 35 hours to complete. 35 on a 45 by 45 square canvas. It's been no. Mm. So that's the only one where I did less than a centimeter per minute. And yes, it's been really, it's been keeping me going and I've been documenting. I've been documenting. And I really, this is gonna be, this is my, it's my holy grail of diamond painting. Each time I'm so happy that I can pick a new project. Well, I can't pick it. My random number generator is gonna pick it. So I go through and I find the number because I've got them all numbered in here. And somehow, even though I did 17 projects, I keep getting some numbers that keep popping up. So I need to redo them. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna uh, put little marks on the back there to make sure that I know I already did it. Otherwise I'm gonna search through the big top and somehow I always manage to get the one that's all the way, all the way through the, to the bottom. This is how I'm gonna try to get to my 24 this year. Um, but then I got into cross stitch. I had been cross stitching. I had, I, last year I wanted to do some other crafts. So I got a crochet kit, mm, not gonna happen. I, I can't, I, I just can't. Uh, I got a cross stitch kit and I got a needle felting kit. Haven't done that then, that one. Uh, might not want to start that right now because otherwise I'm gonna buy more stuff. Yeah, AliExpress artist. That's that's it. Uh, I see something, I buy it. It's a couple of euros. Why not? Um, and I deserved it. I can find a reason why I deserved to do it. Yeah. Um, but that's that's how it's been um, but maybe on the end I really want to get gold so maybe I'll just do some smaller projects on the end if I might not make it I know it's cheating but I want to get 24 out of the bag uh, out of the box I want to be able to close the box yeah um, but I've been really good I haven't bought anything no diamond paintings no, but I did start the, the, the cross stitch because yeah, like I said last year, I bought one kit and I really enjoyed it. And then I bought, well, actually it started when I did cross stitch in Scotland when I was there on holiday because I was missing crafts. I didn't bring any craft supplies. Why not? So I bought some very tiny cross stitch kits. I really enjoyed them. Um, and then I bought some just the one and I, I thought well I can do this this is nice so I bought some more and I actually only worked on the one I had during my night shift since it was really going slow and then I it was my night shift bag for weeks months didn't do anything with it and then I picked it up and said well I'm gonna finish it doesn't care I'm gonna finish it uh, so I did it was a very cute owl. You can see it on my Instagram. I uh, Finished it. I loved it um, But when I got that one, I also ordered some other ones and I actually filmed videos for it for you to, sh to see I have so many videos I never uploaded Yeah, it, it was yeah, no um, So I, I actually order Some I thought very neat designs. Well, they were very neat. The only issue is they're too small. They're too small. 
well too large sorry I'm, they're too large and they oh, yeah but somehow I, I, I glanced to the side for a sec and I, I see my whip my diamond painting whip is uh, lying there I haven't showed you I haven't showed you my project 18 uh -uh. so I've been rambling about the cross stitching hmm. I've been rambling and I missed my whip for diamond painting I'm working on this one which is I'm gonna open it is my abstract dancers and I really love it uh, and with these abstract pieces you get a hit or you get a miss you're either gonna see the image or you're not ladies and gentlemen we're seeing the image yeah we're seeing the image look here's the hat there's the other face up here yeah so this is my current whip and it's been lying I'm, I'm halfway done but it's been lying because I wanted to do the cross stitch yeah so I'm going to close the face those two sides I need to clean up afterwards um, and I started working on cross stitch and I'm gonna show you why I had an issue with that after finishing my second uh, project well the smallest one I could find is this lovely flowery heart with butterflies I love butterflies uh, so I, I I really love the image and I thought well it's not too big this is one page done yes I'm using a hoop I'm very proud I'm using a hoop I bought a hoop uh, I was stitching by hand on forehand and this is just it's one of those kits from Aliexpress so it's cotton threads on Ada 40 count 14 count uh, I'm not a real stitcher I would love to start stitching on all those even weaves and dyed over dyed I've heard all those terms but I would buy too much I would buy most likely join five fabric of the month clubs um, would buy too many uh, patterns so I'm gonna stick with kits yeah and I'm I'm actually divided I'm gonna yeah I got the notification that I need to hurry up phone is dying um, this one is gonna it's, it's taken this is taken me three weeks to do I love the full cover stitching and I really love how it looks so this is page one I do need to do the depth deck stitching on it but it's looking real good but if I buy those kits I have everything included so I have my Ada I have my floss I have everything I need well floss you can't really call it floss it's some horrible kind of cotton but it does look good when you're not too close and I just I love the process that's it I love the process so I'm really liking this but it is taking me too long and I was gonna get burned out so I decided after watching the first video Stitcherista ever made to get some kind of rotation going so I was at my local cross store uh, because I wanted to get a hoop and then I found this little cutie so just a cacti uh, but the hoop came included so yeah it was pretty expensive since it's very small um, but yeah this is it uh, this is how far I've gotten so this is my other whip um, I'm almost done um, and look at the cute needle minder I made this a resin piece I converted it into a needle minder yeah. um, I really liked having one and it's really handy when you're working on on the hoop and working on hand I never really understood why you needed a needle minder now I do it's really handy I do see I lost my needle so I need to go look most likely it's somewhere in my bag um, so yeah the plan is that I'm either gonna walk work one week on 
the large project. I just did that. Or finish a page. So if I manage to finish a page in a week, I can switch to a smaller project. That's my cacti at the moment. And I get to work on this until I finished it. Uh, or a week, because some of my smaller projects are gonna take me more than a week. This is three days working, and this is DMC. And I'm loving the DMC. Yeah, so I kind of ordered, they were on a flash sale on Ali. Yeah, so I ordered two kits, larger ones for my larger rotation, but I did do them on 18 count Ada and with the, they call it silk threads. Uh, if I read the description, they're more closely to the cotton like DMC is. Um, and I have some kits coming in, monochromes, so all in red and I'm definitely gonna buy those in DMC. I'm just gonna buy the DMC threads and work with those um, because it's only one color and I won't have a general mustache. Um, but yeah, this project has 38 colors. Yeah. So no, I'm not gonna substitute all the other larger ones because I don't wanna buy 38 colors of DMC floss in multiple skeins and no, mm -mm, not gonna do that. So yeah, but yeah, well, my, my, my cover paper for that one dropped. Um, it is a 36 by 40 when it's completed and yeah I know you normally work with how many stitches it is I don't have it on me it is something in the one 160 to 170 by 170 something like that I'm not really sure I do need to look that up uh, but what I'm gonna it, it's big and it's full coverage so it's a lot of stitching a lot of stitches uh, and then the back stitches um, but yeah having only those large projects um, and not really having things to relate with going into my uh, relation um, yeah I'm just all over the place today I'm all over but bear with me it's been a year uh, half a year too long um, when I work on this one for either a week or when until it's complete I'm gonna go back to the large one that's the idea um, and as long as I have uh, when I finish it in a week I'm, yeah um, I might sneak in this weekend because this is really just a couple of days and I'm not really feeling the large one at the moment or I might do the bottom part of the heart that's that page isn't that massive um, but yeah um, this is gonna get done this weekend definitely because it's way too warm outside to go outside uh -uh, no way uh, but I did get some hole um, because I'm slowly going out again which has been it, I just didn't feel comfortable mostly because I work with a lot of sick people so I didn't see my family. No, I refused to see my family for two and a half months. It was two and a half months that I didn't see. The only person I saw was a friend. So we drove to the woods, we walked at six feet. Um, since she is young and healthy and yeah. So she's the only person I saw, but I never stepped into the car with her. So we drove separately to the woods and then we walked and then we went back. Um, and, but I didn't see my family. No, so that's been really rough. I like being living alone. I like being single. I, I don't have any issues with it. Would I like to have some companions sometimes? Yeah, sometimes, but during Corona, Oh my God, I actually felt alone and I was so depressed about it and I called my sister crying. 
I, I couldn't do it anymore. It was horrible. Um, I was so happy that I was able to go to work and see my, my, my colleagues there and talk and yeah, it that's been rough. Um, but shopping still is something I don't really like doing, but my friend said, well, we're gonna go, we're gonna go, we're gonna have some lunch and then you can do some shopping. So I got went to the craft store and then she needed some printing paper, which was at a store um, near my place um, and she lives on the other side of the of town so I actually walked by uh, and they had the paper so she went afterwards to get the paper um, but I get some haul um, I got some yarn yarn no floss I think it's actually uh, cross stitch uh, floss on a, sp on a spool. I'm not really sure I like the colors um, and it was one euro and for those of you who know I do my own carnival costumes and it's really the, just a question whether or not we're gonna have carnival next year I'm not sure but I use all kinds of ribbons and bows for that um, so I actually bought some ribbon yeah, seven pieces for five euros. So I bought all these different colored ribbons. So those are gonna go in my carnival costume pack. Uh, and I bought those. It's also ribbon. Um, so I might uh, be using that soon. I do have another idea for my next costume though which is gonna be a coat completely covered in fabric flowers. Yeah, uh, if I wanna do it, I need to start soon. So I need to really find some, some nice jacket to work on. I'm not gonna make a jacket myself. I'm just gonna embellish it. And I got stash, cross stitch stash. Yeah, uh, so I did the kits, uh, the kits um, um, on, on the kits. I'm just gonna do the kits. Um, <clears throat> yeah. uh, and I really picked out a smaller project so I have this very cute Dr. Bunny it's called I believe oh Dr. Hamster very cute I got this little wheel and I actually have an idea for this uh, so uh, this might be my next project um, one of the next projects, but I, I've got some idea for this. So this is also 14 count Ada. Um, everything I got in now is 14 count Ada. Um, this unicorn, too cute. Um, yeah, just backstitching, normal crosses. Nothing fancy, but very cute. I got this one. This is gonna go fast. Look at all those large sections of the same color. I'm gonna fly through that. Um, I th the problem is that the thing I wanna work on next is actually this one. It is so cute. And these are done in French nuts and I really wanna try my French nuts, so that's nice. I got this wintery themed one, a little deer. And I got this duck, look how cute. Uh, and yeah, you know me, when I get Alex with Silas, I buy stuff. I bought so many more, they're still on the way. I don't know where, but they're still coming. So next video, most likely I have some more haul. Um, but we'll see. Yeah, so this is an hour. I hope I made up for being absent. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure how often I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. I am debating changing my channel's name. Yeah, um, I am debating changing it from Dutch Dog Diamond Painting to uh, Dutch Dog Crafting, Dutch Dog Crafting for Health, uh, Didi's Craft, something like that. Uh, let me know what you think. If you have any great ideas, I would love to know. Um, 
but yeah and let me know what you think of this concept of me uh, this is just i took the year no so it, it there was a lot of rambling about the year um of course we're not gonna do that every week because talking about the same year when the year is so horrible we're not gonna do it so uh, it's gonna be less talk and more crafts um but yeah uh, i think i like this concept but if you, you don't think so or you have any advice just let me know there you know there um so i would like to thank you all for watching um sticking with me even though i haven't made a video in a long long time uh, or if you're new welcome hi um this is hopefully a new start um so subscribe or don't uh, i just like doing it i miss doing it so we're gonna do every new video um so yeah this was dv this was dutch dog diamond paint for now but maybe in the future something else and i wish you all very happy crafting so craft laugh and live and i will see you in my next video